Welcome to the channel for the future caretakers of resurrected species. Welcome to the Paleo Zookeepers Association. Oh. Hello there. Welcome to the Paleo Zookeeper Association. My name is Austin. When one thinks about creatures that are extinct, most would think of animals from far and distant past, the large and the bizarre, such as dinosaurs, woolly mammoths, and so forth. While these species have and will be talked about in this channel, there are also many other extinct animals that died out quite recently. And one of them is perhaps the most uh, famous of them all, or one of the most famous, is the thylacine or the Tasmanian tiger. An animal that died out so recently that we actually have photographic evidence of their behavior and existence. As the surviving footage and photographs show, they have been kept in captivity. They also sadly show that captive situations at the time were not ideal, being mostly concrete, bars, barren, and have a very minimal amount of space available. And such captives, captive conditions can give animals stress and that would lead to develop abnormal behavior patterns. This would basically include stereotypic behavior, repetitive, invariant behavior patterns with no obvious goal or function, and apathetic behavior, low to no reaction to emotions like not feeling or expressing emotions, either positive or negative, or feeling indifferent to the situations others may have a reaction to. And the Tasmanian tiger is no exception in this regard. One such stereotypical behavior that thousands have been known to do in captivity is pacing back and forth without any particular reason. That does not include uh, the presence of a keeper or food being available. Another form of stereotypical behavior that has been observed is the constant chewing of wire and bars in their enclosure. One sign of apathetic behavior that's been recorded in thylacines is mostly apathetic sleeping or false sleeping. Not really tired, uh, but just really, really bored. But this does not include how during the times of the day, especially when it's hot, when such behavior is acceptable. But other than that, false sleeping like this, out of boredom, is one sign of apathy. All of which are signs of stress for animals that are not in adequate human care. Along with the limited information we have about the thylacine, I would also use information from other marsupial predators and medium to large size mammalian predators to help get a good idea on how to create a proper environment for the Tasmanian tiger under human care. One of the first adjustments that can improve the thylacine's well-being is enclosure size. While we don't know the exact size of a Tasmanian tiger's home range, experts suggest that they would have a home range between 55 square kilometers or 21.23 square miles and 88 square kilometers or 33.97 square miles. Looking up on large carnivores with similar home ranges, lifestyle, and size, like coyotes and Maine wolves, I would say it's safe to assume that the adequate size for a thousand enclosure would be between 5,000 square feet, or 465 square meters, to 10,000 square feet, or 930 square meters, for every thylacine pair. This is an example of 5,000 square feet by basically like over 70 feet by over 70 feet. You see, it's actually pretty big for, for, for one pair of Tasmanian tigers. This would be a good minimum of exhibit size for them. This is an immense improvement from what the surviving footage shows. The last thylacine named Benjamin was an enclosure that seems roughly the size of an average chicken coop. This size is severely inadequate for such an animal. When asked when animals are active, the general consensus is that an animal is either nocturnal, active at night, or diurnal, active at day. There are, however, animals that are basically in the middle. Observations from experts and 
Historical trappers have noted that the thylacine is a crepuscular animal, meaning that it's active during the twilight hours, dusk or dawn. This could affect public viewings and animal behavior in captivity. Prolonged stress from being exposed to the public without a means of hiding when needed can negatively affect the animal's behavior. Along with adequate space, there need to be habitat enhancements in the enclosure. Bushes, trees, tall grasses, and hollow logs can be used for, for this. Also, with how timid thousands are historically known to be, it would be proper that no more than 50% of the circumference of the exhibit should have public viewing access, 25% for reintroduction candidates. One way to allow proper public viewing without stressing out the thousands are one-way mirrors. This is often used for zoo wolves that are designed for reintroduction to the wild and is being considered for many species in zoological facilities. Another would be to place hidden cameras at their hiding spots so that they can be observed without realizing that they're being observed. According to historical records, the thylacine preferred open forest habitat, much like this main wolf exhibit. Since the thylacine died out so recently, we have an immense amount of deceased biological specimens all over the world, including the brain. Analysis on the brain, both past and present, have shown that the thylacine might not have the sense of smell compared to a dog, but its sense of sight and hearing are immensely developed. One form of enrichment that would be great for this would be elevated platforms, like stone platforms used for big cats. This is so that they could be able to observe the surroundings like they would have in the wild. With them having a well-developed sense of hearing, having the, the exhibit away from where most noise traffic is, or placing sound buffers like hedges would be need to be taken into consideration. Along with their senses, analysis of the thylacine brain have shown that these animals are more intelligent than the Tasmanian devil, based on how deep the wrinkles or valleys of the brain. And credible historical record records have shown that they are intelligent enough to be able to have and train as pets. This has shown that training would not only make working with thylacines less stressful for both keepers and animals, but they can also become enrichment for the thylacine as well. The last thylacine, Benjamin, died in his enclosure due to neglect, and both him and those before him have suffered miserably in inadequate care. Before that, a whole species were killed off and let go because of paranoia and bad science. When we get thylacines back, either from a lab or from the woods of the outback, we must make things right this time. Hey guys, Austin, Paleo Zookeeper here. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry that it took so long. Life and technology gets in the way. And also, illustrations in, in the video credit to Keenan Taylor check out his chat check out his YouTube channel in the, in the description box down below also I bet I, I definitely give a big thank you to the thylacine museum and naturalworlds.org I was able to find a lot of great information about the Tasmanian tiger or thylacine in this site alone along with other sources I'll give you a link to the description box down below and next Next, next time, next video, it, it'll be a tortoise video. <laughs> Cute little guy, isn't he? When in fact, he actually knew that we actually had a tortoise that was much, much bigger than this. Even larger than the Galapagos land tortoise. So next video, it's going to be on that species. Hope you have a great day. A great day. Adios.